Hey there, my name is Lindsay Wiggins. I'm the University of Florida Livestock Extension Agent in Southwest Florida. Thank you for stopping by to learn more about pregnancy diagnosis and beef cattle. If you have any questions at the end of this presentation, I highly encourage you to reach out to the Livestock Extension Agent in your county, or you can contact me at the phone number at the bottom of this screen, or you can send me an email. The first thing I wanna focus on is why we place importance on pregnancy diagnosis and beef cattle. It's a wonderful management tool that you can utilize to increase the profitability of your herd. We expect each female to wean a calf annually, and in the absence of a weaned calf, it's important to your bottom line that you sell that open cow in order for compensation to take place. If you wanna keep some open cows until the market conditions are ideal, you now have the information necessary to separate your open cattle from the bred cattle and focus your nutritional budget on the bred cows. Whether that be in the form of winter supplementation or higher quality pasture, neither of which will benefit your bottom line if the open cattle are taking advantage of them. You do have a decision to make when it comes to which technique you will utilize to determine pregnancy on your ranch. As you can see here, ultrasound offers the greatest bang for the buck. With all three techniques, rectal palpation, ultrasound, and blood testing, you can utilize them 30 days after gestation or 30 days after the bull has been removed. Or for those of you that utilize artificial insemination, 30 days after insemination has taken place. With rectal palpation, training and experience are necessary for accuracy. The cost is going to vary based on the number of head that you have and the travel time for the technician the average cost is about $2 per head on herds greater than 100. Some other expenses to consider for small herds and or individual cows may be in a show herd, for example. The veterinarian or technician will charge a farm visit fee of $150 or more. There's also going to be a per head fee of $2 per head. And if you hire a cowboy to gather or move your cattle, you can expect to pay about $200 per man. I also wanted to point out that a rough or inexperienced technician can increase the risk of early embryonic death. With ultrasound, training, and experience, proper equipment are necessary for accuracy. The cost structure is very similar to rectal palpation. It's going to be about $2 per head on average, especially on those larger herds of 100 or more. With ultrasound, as I mentioned before, you certainly get more information shoot side. After about 55 days of gestation, with ultrasound, we can learn the sex and the age of the fetus. Also, something else that's very unique to ultrasound is that we can determine the viability of the pregnancy through the detection of a heartbeat that is not offered with any of the other pregnancy diagnosis techniques. Something that is unique to ultrasound and pregnant and rectal palpation is that they are both offered shoot side where the ranch manager can make an immediate decision as to what he's going to do with that pregnant or open cow. With blood testing, there is some training involved. It includes learning how to collect blood from a tail, which is fairly simple, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a few moments. The cost is about $3.10 per cow, and that includes the cost of the test itself, the tubes, the needles, and shipping. Consider labor if you have hired someone. This is the least invasive technique that you can utilize to determine pregnancy. Unfortunately, the results are not immediate and they take about two days to come back from the lab. If you're gonna utilize the results to cull your open cattle, then animal identification is necessary, whether that be in the form of a flap tag or an electronic identification button, a hot brand, a freeze brand, or maybe you have your cow's name. Either way, I'm going to show you how you have to use that animal identification in order to make the management decision. I also wanted to share with you a scenario where identification isn't necessarily uh, critical. If a rancher artificially inseminates 250 head, 30 days after insemination collects blood and determines that 60% or 150 are bred, he now knows exactly how many cleanup bulls to put with the open heifers for the next 60 days. When before that may have just been a guessing game. Here are some tools that I think will be uh, very important for you to be efficient in the cow pens. First and foremost, 
get you a very good sturdy table to place next to the squeeze chute so that you can place all of these items on your table and they won't be under your feet or in the way of 1200 pound cows. The first thing that you're gonna need is a red top vacutainer tube and a blood collection needle for each animal. Neither of these items can be reused. It's very important that you pay attention to what color the rubber stopper is on the top of your test tube. The color indicates the type of additive that's placed in the bottom of the test tube. If you utilize the wrong test tube, the wrong color stopper, the test may not be viable at the lab. I also recommend that you have plastic needle holders. These can be reused. It has a tap and die system where you screw the blood collection needle into the top of this plastic needle holder and it'll help protect your fingers once you've inserted this double-sided collection needle into the tail. Something else that I would highly recommend and have learned from experience, get you a writing utensil that has quick drying ink. Do not utilize one of these fancy gel pens where the ink takes at least a day to dry and it's gonna smear the second you touch your touch tube, test tube. A Sharpie is very quick drying. Uh, there are several quick drying inks. Just make sure that you use something that's gonna stick on that paper. Something else that we utilize in the cow pens when uh, a problem may arise are these pre-assembled 5cc syringes and needles. When you stick a cow, you only have one chance to insert this vacutainer tube. Once you've punctured that top, you lose the vacuum seal. If you haven't hit the vein, you're going to lose the vacuum seal and this test tube is no longer usable. If you don't have two cc's of blood in here, which is what you need to submit to the lab, you have to dispose of this test tube, get another one, relabel it, and start over again. If you have a problem that arises like that, then you can utilize one of these syringes until you get the two cc's that you need. Something else that I'd recommend, especially if you're gonna uh, blood test a number of cattle, a large number of cattle, is one of these plastic, some of them are metal, um, test tube holders. This will help to keep everything organized and prevent things from rolling off the table uh, and help you in the future to ship this to the lab, these test tubes to the lab. I also have a clean bucket of water because this plastic needle holder will get manure buildup on the outside because as I mentioned, it is reusable and sometimes blood buildup will occur on the inside. So it's very important that you keep it clean so you can determine when you've actually inserted the vein. As I mentioned before, we need to label these test tubes so that we can make a management decision whenever the results come back. So this cow's number is 5212. I've labeled the test tube with her number and the date that I draw drew the blood. You want to do the labeling before you insert the tail and the reason why is that manure and blood buildup can happen on these stickers and then the ink won't transfer to your sticker. So make sure you do it beforehand. When you get to the rear end of the cow and you're ready to draw blood, it's very important that you palpate that tail and feel the, where the center of the tail is and feel where that groove exists. You have to insert the needle into the center of the tail between the spinous processes. Otherwise, if you were to enter right here, you're gonna hit blood. I'm sorry, you're gonna hit bone. It's very important that you stay in the center of the tail, enter at a 90 degree angle. A lot of people that have uh, experience drawing blood from animals want to enter like they do in the jugular which is at a 45 degree angle that's not going to work here it must be perpendicular to the tail you must be in the center it's very easy to feel with the fit your tips of your finger as you can see here here I'm going to show you a demonstration of how quick it is to draw blood two cc's of blood and also allow you to see what two cc's of blood looks like I also want to explain that we're not using the plastic needle holder in this demonstration just so that you can see what it looks like when the blood has been drawn and the vein has been inserted. 
So that's two cc's of blood. You can see that someone is helping hold the tail while the person pulling the blood sample is doing their job. It's a fairly quick process. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. So this concludes the end of my presentation. I wanted to share the sources that I utilize to create this presentation, and you're welcome to visit those websites as well. I also want to thank Joel Beverly at the XL Bar Ranch for letting me film to make the presentation for you, and Heath Crum for doing the demonstration. As I mentioned before, if you have any questions, I highly encourage you to reach out to the Livestock Extension Agent in North County or feel free to reach me. My contact information is at the beginning of this presentation. Thank you.